Hey guys, it is me, Joy, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, I'm so glad you're here. I am 100% completely blind. I wear prosthetic eyes. Yeah, I see nothing at all, no light perception, and uh, I live my life uh, through the eyes of Joy. You know, like my name is Joy, but my, there's so much more to my name. You know, Joy is a choice, and I've had to learn how to choose Joy through so many of my life's challenges and storms I've faced. And that is kind of why I'm here today is to talk to you about my challenges, my, my, um, my blindness journey, my health journey, my mental health journey, my relationship journey. Like I've been on a big journey for the past four years. Um, and you know, it's been a really, it's, a, it's been the biggest struggle of my life, especially the past year. I haven't been able to be as present as you all have noticed. Um, and it hasn't been because, you know, I've, you know, haven't wanted to. I just haven't been able to give anything of myself because I have been in the fight for my life and fighting for, yeah, for, for life. Today I'm gonna to talk about my mental health. So I know a lot of us struggle with mental health and it's, I didn't quite understand mental health until I've walked through it myself and it's been one of the biggest struggles of my life and to the point where, you know, and I'll get into this, but it's, you know, been something I've faced of, you know, battling those thoughts and um, suicidal thoughts and, and, you know, it had to get so bad. It has to get so bad to get me to that place. and. I am so much better now. Um, and I'm gonna go, like I said, into details on more of like kind of what led me to that place. But, um, but I'm in a much better place now. The sun in my mind is shining bright and I am feeling strong, stronger than I have in so long, um, at least in, a, in like two and a half years. And I am feeling like the chains that I've been bound with have been broken and I have been set free. <laughs> and I am living life now truly um, truly for me, truly on my terms. You know, I'm in charge. I'm, I have realized, you know, so much um, about my life that I, you know, I've lived for others and to please people. And then, you know, uh, it's just been, it's been one of those kind of seasons. And, and so now I'm just like, okay, this is life and life is so precious and it's so fragile. And my mom just passed and she passed away from cancer and, um, on May 3rd, 24. And, you know, it, it's when I watched my mom pass, it, it was beautiful, but it was like, for me, it woke me to say, you know, just to see that life is, is, is so, is so sweet. And we only have one life to live and I'm not going to waste any more time, you know, allowing things to keep me held back. I have, the chains have broken off and I'm looking ahead in my mind's eye and my spirit, in my heart, and I'm seeing this amazing future ahead of me. And I am excited because this is going to be a season full of so much joy and so much truth. I am going to be authentically more than ever myself. And I want you to know that when you hear me speak, you are hearing my heart and not this uh, vamped up personality who wants to give you the, the perfect answers and the things you just want to hear. No, I, I want to share, share with you my whole heart. And because, you know, life is not about just existing. It's about making a difference. And I always say I want to live with purpose and through this channel and through sharing my good times and my bad times, my really, really, really dark times, I'm able to, um, Arabella's coming up to you. <laughs> Wait, oh, she's laying down right at your feet. Oh, okay. Where is she? Okay. There she is. She's not in the camera though. So <laughs> <laughs> my guide, my retired guide dog, Arabella, she's so precious. Um, I'll show her to the camera real quick. She's so sweet. She's beautiful. Hello. Say hi. Arabella, you say hi. You, you hear the mama's you talking about hard stuff. Huh? Yes, she know, and she comes to be right with mommy. Oh, my baby. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> well, this is actually a good transition because, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, the past four years and, and Arabella has been retired um, during COVID. But, but yes, because of everything I've gone through, I, you know, now I, I have this, this vision and uh, I'm, I'm going to live with a greater purpose. And so I can't wait for y'all to be a part of that with me. And thank you all for always the ones that are, have been here. Just, you know, thank you for staying with me. And okay. So Arabella, she's, she's, on, the couch she's on the couch now. Okay. Oh, look, he's here. <laughs> look at that. Oh, you say hi to everybody. Hi everybody. Uh, so, okay. So Arabella says so she wants to be, um, obviously seen right now. Um, so back in 2020, uh, many of you know that my husband and I, we separated and, um, Arabella during that season, it was COVID. So she wasn't able to get out. We weren't able to go anywhere. And she, uh, so anyway, she developed some anxiety. She was developing anxiety issues and relieving issues. And so the decision we came to was to have her retired. And I was living in my own apartment. If y'all remember, and, um, and long story short ish, shortish. Um, my husband and I reconciled and we, I moved back home, uh, after one year of being apart and Arabella became our family pet and she has enjoyed her retirement and she's about to turn eight years old in June. You don't want me holding your hand. <laughs> she keeps pulling it back. She's like, mama, what are you doing? Um, but I am on, so many people ask me, okay, Joy, when are you getting your new, your new guide dog? What, what's going on with that? And because of the past four years of hell that I've gone through, I, I did apply. And a lot of you know that I did apply for a guide dog, um, into a lot of schools, uh, several, several schools. And uh, I was denied and I realize now looking back, it was meant to be, I wasn't, it wasn't the time. It wasn't the right time. I after being denied and the reasons we won't even go into that. I've already talked about that before, but the, but I, I now looking back, realize why I wasn't, you know, I believe that I'm a Christian and I believe that, you know, I believe that God has a purpose in everything and all things happen, um, you know, in the right time. Timing is, is, is always important. And when things don't happen the way that you want and the way that you're expecting and the way that you're hoping, that doesn't mean that all hope is lost. That doesn't mean that, you know, God has forsaken you. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're not going to have your prayers answered. But timing is, God's timing is always perfect. And I believe that. And I, after that season, I, I started getting really sick uh, with infections. And it kind of started at the end of my apartment season um, during the, my apartment season. And then it continued. I, I have a history of infections. I've had many skin infections I started in 2009 and the infections were like cellulitis and MRSA. So staph infections, I have an autoimmune, my autoimmune disease, arthritis and the drugs that I was on the biological injections that I was on compromised my immune system. And I started uh, getting infections, skin infections, with abrasions, and then the abrasions turned into infections, and my infections like just just wrecked my 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 skin to the point of like I haven't really gone into this in uh, in my videos because it's a really um, sensitive topic for me because you'll look at my skin today and you're not going to understand. Um, I guess if you were to zoom in, Amanda, my friend Amanda's filming. Um, uh, I am proud of. <laughs> I am proud of where. I, you can tell me. Yeah. If you're here. Yeah. I am proud of where I've come, how far I've come, and where I'm at today, and that's why I'm like so happy. Yeah. So happy. Okay, you can go back. Yeah. <laughs> Only so much closer. <laughs> so thank you. Sure. Uh, but the infections have, they took over my face. And the first one was in 2009 and it took over the whole right side of my face, uh, my cheek. And to the point where the doctors thought that I was going to need plastic surgery and 
I thought they were going to have to cut a chunk of my skin off my face. And, um, and once they gave me all these strong antibiotics and my IVs and I was in the hospital for two weeks in, in that year and, um, during the hospital stay. And after the, the infection was, uh, you know, it was killed and dried up, the skin just went back to perfectly normal. And it's just amazing. It was amazing, amazing. There's no lines, there's nothing. It's just phenomenal. So that was the first one. And then I continued after that to get more in infections. And, you know, so basically I think I've had like 12 hospital stays since 2009. And I know that, you know, that sounds, it's a lot, but it also doesn't sound like a lot when you're thinking about, oh, it was 20, uh, to, you know, 2024, but uh, you know, most people don't have to go into the hospital really ever. And, and that's a lot, you know, for me, and it's all because of my, my infections and skin and the pain of these infections. So, 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 so bad. Um, and I think every part of my face like because I would be on steroids and they would give me in for my arthritis and then the steroids was called breakouts on my skin and then because I can't see then I want to touch because that's my only way of seeing is by feel and then that would also make infections and then also like you know like picking and things like that sort and it was just this horrible just mess and one thing would lead to another and <sighs> I'm like finding it or trying to find the right words to describe this next part. I'm going to, I want to deal, I want you to know the pain I went through and I'm going to try to paint the picture. And the reason I want you to know is not to, for, it's not for sympathy. It's because I want you to see the joy that I have today. And I want you to understand what I have fought through to get to this place. And, and over the past many years, like, I've been still going through this stuff while I've created my channel and created videos and I could hide behind the camera. And a lot of my videos in the past, you never saw my face. I hid behind the camera. I was the, just the videographer and the, the, the voice, but you didn't have to see me because it's usually guide worker, you know, I'm navigating and going shopping and I did that on purpose. I didn't want you to see my face because my face was not always perfect. And I didn't want, not that y'all wouldn't accept me, but I didn't want questions. I didn't want people to ask me questions. What's wrong with you? Why do you still have a bandage on your face? Why are you, you know, you're always dealing with that. And so I hid behind the camera and I've created some of my best videos actually through that season of my life. So in, even in the midst of that pain, I still was, my heart was to live. It's always been to live. My blindness was not going to stop me. My infections weren't going to stop me. I tried my my best every every day, you know, and being a mother on top of that and having to take care of my baby girls and and being a wife, like I had my own other responsibilities. Um, and at the same time, still try, trying to cope with like blindness, right? Because we know that all my blindies out there, right? We know that that's not always easy. And, you know, you have typical struggles in your own home. Like, you know, when you drop things and you navigate and you run into furniture, it's just like little things like that that would annoy most people. It's just our everyday life when we just have to handle it, right? Well, uh, I, uh, with the infections, they caused some scarring and, and with certain infections. And so I took matters into my own hands because I was not happy with the scarring and doctors weren't understanding what I was talking about. And I was not happy. Like I, I wanted the scarring gone. And so, and doctors were not like supporting me and you know, they're basically just leave it, let it heal, let it be, you know, let it be. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. I don't want these scars. And, and so I didn't even know how I was doing this, but I started working on my own skin myself and, um, I would end up through the nights, many nights, I have worked on my skin with tools and my fingernails, literally cutting away scar tissue and, um, whole, you know, my closet would be like the place where I would go and I would just work in the middle of the night through the nights and sobbing and crying on my floor and having towels that I would be soaked in blood. 
the pain that I went through, and, and I know I was doing it to myself, but I had a purpose. I knew that what I was doing was helping, even though it didn't necessarily look like it was helping. I was helping the situation and, um, <laughs> like there's this area here on my chin that one time I had an infection that ruptured and you could almost stick your finger into my mouth and my skin is perfectly smooth and perfect. That I, I did, I, I, clean, I, I fixed my skin. I fi it was like it, the, the scar was external and I cut it away, ripped my scar tissue. And, and then, w you know, because of sometimes doing that, I got more infected, it got more infected and then I, antibiotics and I went through so much. Um, but, you know, there were so many nights where I would be in my closet and I would be working on my skin through the night and I'm like listening to any kind of inspirational like videos or music, my worship music, um, anything where I can keep my eyes and my heart like focused on ahead and like believing is seeing is what I always say, right? Believing is seeing, it's one of my mottos I live by. When you can't see things changing, you have to have faith to believe it's going to get better. Doctors didn't understand how it was going to get better. They literally were sending me to wound special and, and, and burn specialist I was going to. And they were talking about doing skin grafts on me. And, uh, and they didn't have the answers for me. My husband, kids, like no one understood. Joy, just stop touching it. Don't, don't do that. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. I have to do this. If I don't do this, I'm going to be scarred. And I don't, I don't have a lot. I didn't have a lot of faith in doctors to take care of me and cause they have betrayed me and, and you know, just not listening to me. So I figured the only way I'm going to do this is on my own. And, um, and I would get comments from you guys like in the night, you know, and I'm working on my skin and I get these comments and my voiceover reads it out loud to me in my ears and, you know, and, and it's just, you guys like encouraging me on a video I had done. And I would just sob because here's people all over the world who are watching my content and they have no idea, like the struggle I'm going through in this very moment, you know, I would hold on to my dressers and my walls, my doors, and I would hold on while I would rip and rip and rip my skin and blood would be pouring out of my face. Like I'm a walking miracle. And I knew that when nobody else was really understanding what I was going through and what I was handling and how I already knew it was going to turn out. Okay. I had like, God had told me and spoke to my heart, joy. I remember this, this happens a lot, has happened a lot where God says, joy, it's okay. I believe you. I trust you. I know where, I'm giving you the strength to do this. I'm going to be your plastic surgeon. You're just the hands, but I'm guiding your hands and I'm going to, I'm going to make you okay. And no one else has to believe you, but you know, I believe I, yeah, he believed in me and I believed in him. And I knew that together we were going to, we were going to tackle this. I had an infection under my right eye, um, started a couple, two and a half years ago. And it was such a deep infection that literally had a gaping cavity. Uh, Amanda, right? You've seen it. Yes. Yeah. It was absolutely horrific. And a lot of times like in this past season where I wearing sunglasses, I was wearing sunglasses because I have a bandage. I ha had <laughs> a bandage under my eye. We're not talking a little surface bandage, like to the point where you had to like pack it. It was, it was deep and doctors were saying I would have to have surgery and I was in the hospital a year and a half ago and doctors were just like, yeah, you're going to have to have surgery and have, they're going to like cut part of your under eyelid and like sew it back together. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really thinking that's going to happen. I, 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 I think I'm, I'm, we're going to, we're going to be okay. So I just kept forging ahead and literally three weeks ago, when I went to Tennessee to see my mom, I, you know, she was about to pass. As I was there, the last part of my eye was, it healed up and I've been doctoring it so carefully and like, so scared. Like I, I, I can't, I haven't worn makeup. I, the first time I wore makeup in two and a half years, like all over, like eyes, mascara, 
I put my prosthetics in. I wore makeup everywhere. It was in, uh, it was in Tennessee visiting my mom. My, my sister and I went to church one night and she did my makeup up and it was the first time. And I was like, I, it, from that moment, that night forward, when I wore makeup all over, you know, she did my makeup so beautifully. And I, I felt for the first time, I felt like I was whole again. And I've had such joy and excitement because when you've gone to hell and back, you appreciate where you are, even though I still have challenges, right? And I now am like amazed. I like my, my skin is, is amazing and I am so grateful, but it's been a really, it's taken not only a toll physically, but mentally. That has killed me in my soul. It did. It, 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 it literally has, there are scars in my soul because of what I've gone through that, yeah, I need a lot of therapy <laughs> <laughs> to heal. I need a lot of therapy to heal. I'm, I'm on that journey. And, but I'm so glad and that aside, if that wasn't enough, then I've been dealing with eye pain, chronic eye pain because of the infection under the eye. It put, it, it put a lot of uh, inflammation into the eye socket and the eyeball. And I've been on methadone and oxycodone um, every day for now almost a year. And uh, as this eye has been under the eye has been healing, the pain has been getting better. I've been able to put the prosthetics back in and now I am off my oxycodone and methadone. Yay! I beat my drug, so I got off all my on my own. I did it myself, and I I am just so ecstatic because I'm reclaiming you guys. This every step is reclaiming back. You know, I didn't I didn't lose anything. I I, I might I might have lost I might have lost time, right? Where you know moments in my life, but I'm, I'm reclaiming as much as I can back. And now because of these things that are turning around for me, I am now going to, um, I'm not taking for granted any s second that I have, you know, this, from this moment forward. So thank God that's much better. Cause that was nerve pain in my eye burning, like on fire, like fire, hot pain and wearing ice packs on my I, where I'm also like my face is hurting and in, in, in so much pain and everything is just aching. And then on top of that, my arthritis was flaring my joints. And then I developed, I've had psoriasis on my scalp. It's a skin issue and it was on my head. And the psoriasis like took over the whole scalp of my head and it causes lesions all over my head and bleeding and cuts and it's an overproduction of cells they turn over to the skin so they turn over too fast and so i have like scabs and uh, sores you know i would have these horrible sores in my head that would ooze and i mean i'm just telling you painting the ugly picture it's an ugly picture of how bad i was with combining everything else I already had going on with me still at the same time and then my hair was flaking, my scared, uh, scalp was flaking all these, not just like dandruff, I'm talking to the point of dust, like, like powder, like pollen all over your car, all over my pillows and my sheets because my head was sloughing off all these cells and it was so bad. I wore, I've had extensions in my hair um, for most of the past six, well, six years, I've worn extensions and my natural hair is dark. And then I have, I had these long extensions to give me the length that I was wanting. Well, for six years I had them in and I started to, with the psoriasis on my head, it got worse. It was getting worse because these extensions are pulling the weighing, they're weighing on my skin, my skin and my scalp. And then I started to lose hair. I was having, my hair was falling out. Well, in October, around Halloween of 23, I made the hard decision. One morning I, I woke up and my head was just crazy bad. Like I can't sleep. I'm in agony with my head. We're not talking light itching. We're talking torturous pain and bleeding. And so, and I remember my husband was getting ready for work and I just came into the bathroom and I sat on the closet floor and I said, and I hadn't told him how, what I was thinking. And I just 
said, I can't do this anymore. I said, I can't do this. My hair extensions have got to come out and I think I've lost so much hair, I'm gonna to need to wear wigs. And that to me sounded like awful, like this awful thing. Well, you know, I'm having to have my hair removed, my hair cut. I gotta save my hair, I've gotta save my scalp, I've gotta treat my scalp, we've gotta do all these things. And then on top of it, I have to wear wigs. Like, oh my God. I have been thinking about that this was gonna happen for a while but I've been living in denial and trying to push it aside. Like every time I would go get my extensions, they would take them out and put them back in. And they were sew in kind, they would sew them in. I was so embarrassed because they could see my scalp, then they could see like the how much hair loss I've had. And I would just be like, just don't talk about it, don't talk about it. As long as we don't talk about it, we don't have to, we don't have, we can just pretend it's not happening, right? Mm -hmm. And I can't, I couldn't do it anymore. Like I can't do this anymore. And when I told my husband, he was like, no worries. Like, like, okay, cool. Like, let's, let's, uh, let's like together tonight, we can pull up some wig, you know, websites and let's find some that you would like, you know? And, and I'm like, okay. Like he was all so cool about it. And so we, um, we did, and I ordered and ordering, um, two wigs and so I bought two wigs and those were like beautiful such beautiful wigs they were just like the hair that you know i i would wear today i'm well i wear it today but it's yeah they were fun it was actually it became fun because my husband he's like he's describing all the wigs like we were looking at and he knows like which ones yes to kind of talk to me about and which ones to overlook but he would describe them to me and then i would picture them in my in my mind's eye and then uh, we you know, finalized kind of came down to the top two that I wanted. And they came in the day I was going to my hairstylist and she was going to take out the extensions. I was so worried. Really, I was. I got, went in there though. She took out the extensions. She cut my natural hair. We, she cut it up to my neck, up, I guess, around my, my, a little below my chin. And I was amazed when she took out the extensions and washed, she did it, like the scalp scrub and everything. Anyway, I was amazed that my hair wasn't as bad as I was thinking it was going to be. I thought it was gonna have like these bald patches and you know, but it wasn't like that. It was, you know, yeah, it had gotten thinner, but it was like not, nothing like I was expecting it. So that was really nice. And she gave me this really cute haircut that I was like, I actually could see myself wearing this, like going to, you just going out, like not, not going out, out, but like going to Target or something. Like, I'm like, this is cute. It's, it was really cute. I came home, um, you know, and she had colored my natural hair and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I came home and I got home before my girls had gotten, they had gone out and they came in. And when they came in, they saw me, my girls were just like, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, your hair is so cute, it's so cute. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, that made my day when my kids were just like, mom, I love your hair, it looks so good and the way she has styled it. And so it was really great. So I was very pleased. And of course my hair has been growing since October and now my natural hair is about down to my shoulders. But y'all, I am in love, in love with wigs now. The thing that I thought was like the worst thing ever, like, oh my gosh, I've got to do wigs. Like, no, 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 I don't have to do wigs. I want to wear wigs. They are my joy. They are my, you ask my friends and family and everyone will say that Joy is addicted to wigs. Mm -hmm. Amanda, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I now own. I've described many a wig to her. Too. Yes, I, I now own 16 and counting, 16 wigs. Um, this is one, we'll say this is 16. And she is my favorite. I have her in two different colors, but in the darker range, the brown family, but I have one that has more highlights in it. This is a dark brown. She's called Brooklyn and she is by Renee of Paris. So she is my absolute favorite. She's got some, um, some fringe bang and I can wear the bang more in front where it's kind of longer bang. Um, and then she's got these gorgeous beach waves. Can you see? Yes. And she like is long. She's, she's long. She's 17 inches long at the longest part of, from my nape of my neck down 17 inches. 
and oh my gosh, she has the most amazing texture. She's heat friendly. I can flat, I, I'm not gonna flat iron her because I love her curl, but you can actually flat iron her, you can curl her, um, but she has this gorgeous curls already in her. And as she has just, she feels real. She's amazing. And um, I have been buying wigs and they have all different price ranges. And I've realized that the highest price range does not mean the best. I mean, there's really good ones I have. I, I from like $600, this, I don't buy them anymore at 600. I've, I have my tricks and get my coupons and I look and I search and I find the best price. And so I don't like to pay more than $250 for a wig if I don't have to, 300 at the most. And I am, this one is, I, I saw it on sale yesterday for $129, $129. And this is the most comfortable wig. I don't feel like I'm even wearing it. My hair's up in a, a, a wig grip. There's a wig. Oh, I'm gonna start a new area of my channel talking about blind girl wearing wigs and how does a blind girl style a wig? How does a blind girl put on a wig? How does a blind girl choose her wigs and, um, and keep up with her wigs and whatever? Because I have been following a lot of wig uh, wearers and there's no one out there that I can find that is uh, blind and talks about wigs and because for me it's not about the way well of course it's about the way it looks i want to look good but for me it's about the way it feels and i style it and do it all myself and um it's just amazing so i have because of something bad happening to me i have taken that and i have turned it into something absolutely stunning and absolutely beautiful and something that i never knew was going to bring me joy literally you know so that goes to really preach because how many of us get so frustrated when something doesn't go our way look even my blindness right i was so sad that i lost my sight in the beginning and was grieving and that's normal but then i realized that i could see in other ways like god helped me to see through the through my mind through my heart through my other senses and I realize that it's not so bad after all. And look at here, I have this amazing channel. I have my platform, my social media accounts where I can reach others and make a, a greater impact in this world. And I don't know if I would ever be doing this or anything like this if I hadn't gone through what I went through. It's all about changing your perception and seeing your situation through a different set of eyes, right? And this is just one, a, a new way I'm learning how to see and I'm learning how to live and I'm learning how to enjoy. I might not, I don't have to wear wigs. I, I mean, after that, if I get, once I get the, the, the skin on the head treated, I'm right, right now we're really struggling to find me a treatment. Um, it's really painful, but um, you know, I've been on biological injections. I've been doing injections and giving myself shots in my leg with a, um, a drug called Humira, and it was not working at all for, for my skin. So we're now uh, going to be trying something different, and hopefully y'all can be you know, praying for me that we will find a better treatment for me that will take care of my scalp, and so I will have that, that at least taken care of, and I won't have to be ugh, in misery with that. But even then, like the hair is coming back in. My hair since October has come back in thicker, and it's just amazing because I'm treating now the, the issue, the root problem. I'm treating the root <laughs> problem. <laughs> I didn't even mean for that to come out. But um, but um, yeah. So I'm treating the root problem now, and the hair is getting healthier. And um, yeah. So so good things are coming uh coming down the road for that uh, on that front. Um, but going back, and I want to before I go into the next section here, I want to just give a trigger warning. I'm going to talk about mental health and my mental health. I've touched on it, but I really want to go into that because that has been the defining thing for me it has been my mind. The battle, right, that we face is not physical. It's, it's, it's in our minds. How many of us deal with our thoughts, our criticism, our own criticism, right? We deal with our own insecurities. We are our own worst enemy. And that's here in our mind. And my mind has been during this season with all these things that were coming against me, like my mind was the thing that was wanting to kill me, literally 
kill me. So there is, uh, there is many nights where I've had some really rough times here and, you know, um, I can't get out of my, when I've been so sick with the things I've been telling you about, I've been isolated here in my home. I haven't been able, I wouldn't go out for a month at a time. I wouldn't leave my house. I wouldn't step outside my front door. When you're blind and you can't see light, I live in the, and the darkness is more prevalent, even though I see nothing. Um, I live in that sense, that place of nothingness. And then I'm faced with so much physical pain and that physical pain and that feeling of isolation. And you can't get out because you can't leave. I don't want to leave because I have all these things coming against me and I'm in so much pain, but I don't know what to do. Um, and, and I can't get in a car and just go for a drive by myself because how many of you guys just like to be by yourself sometimes, you know? Um, and I can't just get in a car and, and go for a drive just to get out of the house. I have to go with somebody. And, and that's just not always what you want to do. Well, I've been going through ketamine uh, infusion therapy. And I've talked about that on my channel over this past year, year and a half. And ketamine has been such a really amazing tool um, resolution for helping me with my uh, depression. I have bipolar disorder, disorder bipolar one, um, and uh, and resistant depression tr uh, treatment. Like nothing has been able to really treat my depression. So I went into uh, research and found that ketamine is a really amazing thing and is given through an IV uh, with a medical um, physician and I'm monitored with my heart rate and my pulse and my blood pressure and they have cameras on me and so it's fully safe and it's not addictive because they, they're monitoring you and you're only able to have it in certain controlled um, increments. And I was going in for therapy for that and it was really such an amazing tool. So you can search for Joy Ross Ketamine and you can find my ketamine videos that I have done. But during this time, it still wasn't the answer that was really getting me out. I kept, I would get better and then I would go back. I would take so many steps forward and then I would fall back. And it was just this constant battle of back and forth, back and forth. And my physical health was a part of that because once your, your skin's messed up, you're hurting in so much pain, your eye, you're burning, your head's burning, you're flaking everywhere, your, your hair's falling out. I don't want to, I can't get out of the house. I don't want to go to restaurants. I don't want to be with friends. I don't want to do anything because that means I have to be in public, in the public eye. I have to, I just wanted to hide away and die. I did. I just wanted to die. I didn't care. I, I, I love my family. I just, I was in such torment. And those of you who understand, like you, you don't want to, you don't want to lose your life. But at the same time, you don't want to live either. Living means you still have to go through pain. And all I wanted to do was get out of pain and get out of my misery. And just so I didn't have to breathe another breath with agony in my soul. One night here at the house, I had a really rough night and I um, got into argument with my husband and daughters and, you know, they want to tell me what I need to be doing. I don't know. They do it all out of love. But I was in a place where I just didn't want to hear anything else. And I don't have the answer. I can't change the way I feel. I can't change my mind. I can't change. I mean, I would literally, this is a trigger warning here, but I would literally like in the night, go to the knives and I would take one of our big sharp knives and I would just hold it to my wrist. Wondering like how fast it could take. But I couldn't do it. Um, I, my girls are my world. <laughs> They're my babies. And I just, but at the same time, I'm going, God, but then help me. Why do I have to go through this? I can't do this anymore. I've been going through this for so many years. <laughs> Please take it from me. This one night I, 
in this argument. I just like, I just ran to my, my front door and I grabbed my cane and I just took off in the darkness. And I, I just had to get out and I had to get alone and I had to get some fresh air. And I was just in my sweats and my Uggs and I took off and I started going down the street to the intersection. And as I was just walking, I was just crying and I'm just, so one time in my, my ketamine treatment, I had a, a death experience, uh, in my head, like in my own, um, um, when the mind and body were detached, uh, I had this experience where I saw myself die. They call it an ego death and it can happen during ketamine and i remember i was walking along the street down the road here and it was nighttime and i walked out into the street and i got ran over and i remember what that felt like and i laid i laid down in the road and and I, I remember like feeling I died and I remember like leaving my body in the moment and I remember saying to myself, it's not, I can't be over, I can't be over, I'm not done living, I have so much life still left to live. I woke up from my ketamine, came to and I was just sobbing. I just saw myself die, but at the same time, it, it woke me up. But this night, I, w I was walking along the street, and I was, was thinking about that. I sat at the corner um, by the light pole. I kind of sat at the corner, away from the corner, but on the corner. And I just sat there with my knees up around my, my arms around my knees at my chest. And I just sat there and I was just sobbing and crying. And my family didn't know where I was, but they had got out and were out to search for me. My daughter had got in her car and was driving and my husband and my other daughter came down the street and they came after me. They found me and then they kind of had an intervention right there in the corner, um, all three of them. And I was resistant to them. Like I wanted to just go and I wanted to just walk out into the street, you know, I just was tired of fighting. They wanted to put me in the, in the psychiatric hospital that night. I said, I just said, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And my daughters, my Georgiana, I mean, my precious baby, she, she sat down on the ground with me and she had her arm around me and she said, Mama, she, and, and my girls both deal with mental health. And, um, and so she and, our, she and I are very similar in our emotions. And she said, she said, Mama, I know what you're going through. Like, you know, she's so good now. She's in a, such an amazing place. But that time she helped me and she linked arms with me. She goes, come on, Mama, let's go home. <laughs> And I was trying to walk independently with my cane and she, she's like, Mama, I've got you. <laughs> and I felt like I, she really did have me. And, and then my husband and daughter, other daughter were there too. And we walked home and they wouldn't let me be alone. That night, my girls and my husband were all in the, our bedroom together and they brought their, their books they were reading and and they came into my room and just sat on the floor and everybody camped out in my room because no one was going to let me be alone. That's love. They loved me so much they weren't going to go to sleep. I took some medicine that I needed, uh, one of my clonopins, clonopins, and I, it calmed me down and I was able to then come back to my right mind and, and then I went to my girls and I apologized. I didn't want to scare them. But I've threatened my life so many times because I've been in such torment. Does any of you know what I'm talking about? 
you don't want to die, but you don't want to, it's just this horrible place of feeling stuck. I've been at that, in that place for a long time, a long time. And finally, my psychiatrist offered me another medication. It, it changed my life, Sibilify. And within three days after I started my Abilify, I started to feel this cloud lift off of me. And it literally turned on the lights in my mind. I wasn't in the dark anymore. I could smile. Even though I'm still, I was hurting in my body, I could still, I could smile again and I could see it brightening up and it was like so beautiful and I had energy, y'all. I wasn't able to, I didn't care about like getting a shower. I didn't care about like cleaning my house. My house had gone to the pits and I'm still trying to recover from that, um, from my, my worst time. Um, but yeah, I am like now, I am mentally so clear I am so like together. I'm so strong and my health has has improved like you know with the eye and the pain and the infections and everything has improved so much and I'm in such a great place right now and I am ready to be back to I'm here to stay and I'm here to make a difference and I'm here to like be with you guys just to say you're not alone. You know, we're all going through stuff. And for me, it's the problems I've listed. But for you, it could be something different. And no matter what it is, though, we're here in this world together and we can love each other and we can support one another and we can encourage one another. And I'm here to encourage you that it's not over. It's not over. The best days are in front of you. You have to believe it with your whole heart. You have to see it. You have to see yourself where you're going. Don't get stuck what's in front of with what's in front of you. Look past that. Look down the road. You can see your destination way ahead of you. Don't get distracted by the 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 wreck that's on the side of the road right next to you. Look down the road. You can see your your destination and that's where I'm going. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. And I want you all to be there with me when I get there. And it's going to literally be amazing. And if you wonder why I, I have lost the ability, I don't care what people think anymore about me and why I make the choices I choose, you know, now. And, and it's my joy. It's my life. It's my happiness. It's my freedom. And I'm celebrating. And I, I hope that you all just come and celebrate with me. Um, I don't, I don't need all the negativity, so we're here for positivity and for light and blessings and, and joy and hope. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I, I, I'm sure there's something I, I, I forgot. Oh, you know what I forgot to tell you is I, I went through hearing loss as well. So I wear hearing aids and... Oh yeah, by the way. Oh, by the way, I'm also oh, deaf. <laughs> Can you believe I forgot that? I can't believe that either. But yeah, you should pull back to see the, the hearing aid. Uh, or we've seen them in another one. We'll do it in another one, yeah. But yeah, so I, <laughs> I'm i partially like deaf, and that's been a challenge on top of everything else is, is, is going through you know, everything. And then on top of it, I can't hear what people are saying. Um, you know, I have to, and I can't see what they're doing. And I'm trying to, and it's just... <sighs> It's a lot, yeah. but you know what? I'm still smiling and you can still smile. <laughs> laugh about what you're going through. You know, laughter is the best medicine they say. And joy is, on, is honestly the way I'm getting through what I'm, what I'm going through. And that's the thing, we're going through. We're not, we're not staying where we are. We're going through the circumstance. So that means when you go through it, what do you go through? You go through a tunnel, right? What you come out, right? You're gonna come out the other end. So just hold on to that hope, hold on to that faith, hold on to your joy and keep believing that you've got, you've got it and the life, life is ahead of you. You're living it and, um, and it's worth living for. It really is. All right. I love y'all so, so, so much. Like this video, 
comment below. I love to hear from you all so, so, so much. Oh yeah, and subscribe to my channel. <laughs> all right, bye.